All right, so I'm going to be talking about a couple of measures of location. And the first one I'm going to be talking about is the mean, and then I'll, I'll explain what the median is next. Now, the mean is something that we're all familiar with, and another term for mean is the average. And what I have here on the spreadsheet are two formulas. And these are statistical formulas that represent how to compute the mean. One of them is related to sample data, and then the other one is, relation to, is related to the the population. And the steps are pretty much the same. It's just the notations are a little bit different. So if we focus on this first one, we have uh, X bar, which means a sample mean equals, and then we have sigma and X. Now, this is what we uh, use to represent the sum of. So the sum of X, X in our case is going to be the data points that we're paying attention to. So if we're going to try to calculate the mean of cost per order, for example, each x, so x sub i here, i means the index position. So however many index positions you have related to cost per order, and we have quite a few. So uh, we have plenty of x's that we have to sum up. And then once we sum those up, we're going to, we're going to divide that by n. And notice it's a lowercase n, which represents a sample size. So this formula that we have in the bottom, same steps to compute the average, but the notation is different. So now we have a mu instead of an x bar. And then we have the sum of x sub i, same thing, divided by capital N. And capital N is, uh, in, in statistical notation, is the population size that you're dealing with in your data. And oftentimes, we normally have the sample, so it's a subset of the population, and it's a sample that's usually enough to be able to represent the population and make inferences on them to generalize off that population. So what we have here is a sample of cost per orders that come from the purchase orders data set. And I'm just focusing on column G and I have this over on a different worksheet. And next to that, I have X1, X2, X3. Just so you know that this is what we have here where it says X sub I, meaning in our case, X sub one would be the first data point, which represents 2,700. X sub two would be the, uh, that'd be the second data point, that'd be 19,250. X sub three would be the third data point. This would be 15,937.5 and so on. Um, so that's how you would want to, to read it when you're looking at these formulas. We're, we really don't need this to compute the average. It's just there to illustrate what we mean by these formulas here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and compute the average for cost per order and I, even though there is an Excel average, an equal sign average function, I'm going to manually go through this based off of what the formula is doing here, just so you know exactly what's going on in the back end. So the first step is to sum the cost per order values. So here are all the values. So the sum of XI, so all of these values that we have here. So before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and give this a name range so I can be able to refer to this a little bit easier. So I'm going to select all of these data values and I'll say CPO for cost per order. And I'll just refer to it like that from now on. So when it comes down to trying to get the sum of cost per order, this numerator, I'm gonna say equal sign sum using that function. And I wanna add all of those up. So I'm just gonna put CPO since I did give it a name range and hit enter. So this is the total amount when it comes down to cost per order. I could also give it a currency since we are dealing with money here. And then the number of observations is the, the number of cost per order data values that we have. And if you notice here, we're starting off at the first data point, which is X sub one. And all the way down, we have 94. So we have 94 observations, but there is a function to do this. If, if we did not have this column, let's say, for example, it was hidden and we want to know 
the number of observations and we could just count just that count function or count all we just count a and i will say cpo so like that data we have 94 observations now to get the mean i will divide the sum of x divided by n so here's the sum of x divided by n And this would be my average. So this is this is what's going on in the back end. Now, the shortcut method is equal sign average function. Select the data, and we have the average. I'm just going to go ahead and format this. There you have it. The mean is sensitive to outliers. So if you have values that are unusual and not really consistent with the values that you have with the rest of the data in, in, in your data set, um, then it can kind of throw off the average value. And so uh, one of those measures that accounts for outliers and, and tackles that issue is a median. And this is another way of figuring out what the center point is more or less uh, with your data set or that, those particular values of, of the variable that you're paying attention to. There is a function for this, which is equal sign median. And now if I were to select all of these values, hit enter, this would be my median for this data set here. Uh, but manually, if you're trying to figure out the median, what you would do is if your data set is not ordered, then you would want to first make sure that you sort it out. So you'll notice in the mean tab, that the data here is not really sorted. But here we do have them sorted out. Now I'm just going to go ahead and say median here so we know what we're doing. But um, let's say, for example, we're not using the median function, then we know that the count is 94, right? So if we're trying to get the median, what we do is we will say 94 observations divided by 2 which is 47, and that would represent the index position 47. So we have these ranks here, and if we go down, we have 47. Now, because we have an even number of observations in this example that we're dealing with here, then what you would want to do is focus on the two middle values. So if we get these two values and divide them together, this would represent the median. Now we do have some outliers in the data set and these right here that have these very small values in comparison to the thousands of dollar values that we have, which we can throw off at the center point of your data would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in mean and I'm gonna get the average again. And I just wanna demonstrate, let's say if I were to substitute for this first value, instead of it being $68.75, I'm going to say zero. And notice when I did that, my mean is, value is changing, but my median isn't. So let me just do a couple, instead of zero, let me say five dollars. Several ones here. Notice that every time this is changing, my mean is changing, but my median is still the same because it's paying attention to that middle number that I have when the when the data is sorted out, when those values are sorted out. So this is what we mean by median is a good method of measure of location if you're dealing with outliers in your data. Now let me go ahead, before I conclude this video, just talk about the mode, which is another type of measure of location. So I'm going to hit equal sign mode, and I have two options here that I would want to choose from. I have the dot multiple and then dot single. It really, you just have to assess the data, and if you feel like there's going to be multiple modes, then you would want to select this one, but it's a little bit of a, of a process in comparison to the dot single. So if I were just to choose that dot single and select this data that I have here, it will shoot out and let me know what is the value that is shown the most in this data set, which is the value number five. Now, there could be two different values that are appearing 
the same number of times, right? So th that's one of those things that you would want to pay attention to if, if you're trying to figure out the mode. And if, and if that is the case, now let's say, for example, I'm going to change this a little bit and I'll say five, and then I'll just put any number here just for demo purposes. Now we have two values, two unique values that are appearing at the same time. And the way that you would have to do this, if you believe that there's going to be multiple modes in your data set, you would want to select a few blank cells. So if you think that there's going to be two or three modes, then you would want to select two or three blank cells. So I'll just go ahead and select four. And I'm going to hit the equal sign and then type in mode. And then I'll select MULT. Now here I'll select the data set and I'll just go ahead and do a, a subset selection here. So I'll just select these values, these first 10 values and close the parentheses. Now I don't want to hit enter because it will just populate one mode. So I would have to hold down on my keyboard, the buttons control shift and enter. And you'll notice that there are two values that got populated. So the number five and 55 uh, are the, would represent the mode and what I just selected. And then these NAs are just basically letting you know there are no other modes. So it's a little bit tricky when you're using the mode function, but hopefully this gives you some clarity.